The Lakota Sioux, a Native American tribe with a rich cultural heritage, faced a challenging history characterized by being forcefully moved to reservations. This historical chapter unfolded during the westward expansion of European settlers, sparking intense conflicts over coveted land and resources. Driven by the U.S. government's pursuit of territorial control for settlers and the facilitation of railroad construction, policies were ruthlessly implemented, systematically displacing Native American communities. However, the Lakota Sioux's pivotal moment came with the 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty, creating the Great Sioux Reservation. External interests, notably gold in the Black Hills, violated the treaty, sparking the Black Hills War and 1876 Battle of Little Bighorn. Subsequent actions, like the Dawes Act in 1887, further reduced reservation lands. The imposed reservation system confined the Lakota Sioux to specific areas, disrupting their age-old nomadic lifestyle and catalyzing enduring socioeconomic challenges. However, amidst the remnants of a disrupted past, questions arise. What stories lie beneath the surface of this reservation? How does the Lakota Sioux community manage to balance preserving their heritage with meeting the demands of the modern era? Stick around as we reveal the inside life on the Lakota Sioux Reservation. As you watch this video, help us hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for joining us once again. The Lakota are Native Americans that make up the Confederation of the Great Sioux Nation, along with Western Dakota and Eastern Dakota tribes. Lakota means friends or allies, while Sioux is the name for this large alliance of North American Indian tribes of the Midwest. The Sioux were known for their warrior culture and expert hunting skills. They endured years of warfare with other tribes, as well as encroaching white settlers. Despite the Sioux's warrior prowess and hunting expertise, persistent conflicts arose with other tribes and encroaching settlers. Land treaties signed with the U.S. Army in the 1800s were persistently broken by the American government, motivated by a desire to exploit gold and other resources on Native American land. This, along with the relentless breach of agreements and the imposition of policies like the Dawes Act, resulted in a tragic chapter for the Lakota Sioux. After subsequent conflicts and legislative acts, including the notorious Wounded Knee Massacre in 1890, the Lakota found themselves increasingly confined to reservations. The U.S. government's implementation of policies, such as the allotment system, further fragmented tribal lands. The Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota became an end point for many Lakota, symbolizing the harsh consequences of historical injustices. This reservation stood out for its distinctive cultural richness, deep-rooted traditions, and the enduring resilience of the Lakota Sioux despite historical adversities. It has been a focal point for preserving and revitalizing native heritage, showcasing unique ceremonies, art, and traditions that set it apart from other reservations. The Oglala Lakota, a subtribe of the Lakota Sioux, primarily occupies the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. The Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, located in the state's southwest region, is home to 30,000 to 40,000 people, mainly identifying as Oglala Lakota Sioux. It is one of 565 federally recognized Indian nations in the United States, spanning 2.2 million acres, roughly the size of Connecticut. The reservation holds deep cultural significance, with residents dedicated to preserving their heritage despite historical challenges. Based on data from the nonprofit organization, Remember from 2007, Pine Ridge is one of the poorest reservations, with a typical individual income of $4,000 per year and an 80 to 90% unemployment rate. More than 52% of people in Oglala, Lakota, 
the largest of Pine Ridge's three counties, were living below the poverty level, according to a 2014 U.S. Census Bureau survey. Remember claims that public health has suffered against this background of unemployment and poverty. More than 80% of the population struggles with alcoholism, and around 25% of newborns experience fetal alcohol syndrome or related conditions. With 48% for males and 52% for women, it has the second lowest life expectancy in the Western Hemisphere, only surpassed by Haiti in the Caribbean. The rates of diabetes and TB are eight times higher than the national norms, while the risk of cervical cancer is five times higher than the U.S. average. Crimes committed on the reservation by members of the tribe and other indigenous people are under the authority of the tribal administration. However, via some legislative measures, federal authorities have diminished tribal autonomy on Native American reservations throughout time. The U.S. Census Bureau reports that more than 5.1 million Americans identify as either wholly or partially Native Americans or Alaska Natives. Of this population, approximately 2.5 million individuals identify as indigenous Native Americans or Alaska Natives, with over half residing outside of reservations. The International Work Group for Indigenous Affairs estimates that Per capita income in Indian areas is about half that of the U.S. average, and the poverty rate is around three times higher, even though conditions in indigenous communities vary greatly. Pine Ridge is one of the reservations under the U.S. federal government that exercises varied degrees of semi-sovereignty. Understanding life on the Pine Ridge Reservation requires acknowledging the historical context that has shaped the community. The enduring issues resulting from intergenerational poverty in Pine Ridge have their roots in the country's colonial past. This is according to Nick Estes, a PhD candidate at the University of New Mexico, whose work focuses on indigenous history and decolonization. He claims that neither the Lakota of Pine Ridge nor the other 566 federally recognized tribal groups in the U.S. can receive long-term solutions from the current or past presidents or the rest of the American political system. According to Estes, there has been a long history of land theft, ethnic cleansing, mass killing, and treaty violations against Native Americans in North America. These events have left a profound legacy of poverty that still affects many indigenous communities today, both on and off reservations. Native Americans are impoverished, not because they were unable to advance civilization. We were not regarded as poor before the arrival of the colonists. We had much, he contends. At Wounded Knee on December 29, 1890, the U.S. Army carried out one of the bloodiest mass killings against Native Americans in North America. The Lakota, led by Chief Spotted Elk, also known as Chief Big Foot, were killed by the soldiers for refusing to follow the reservation borders that the U.S. government had imposed. Between 150 to 300 Lakota were killed. The victims were later dumped in a mass grave by hired civilians. President Ulysses Grant's 1869 peace policy began the compulsory enrollment of over 100,000 indigenous people in Christian boarding schools, which persisted until the late 20th century. Children at these institutions experienced a devastating litany of abuses, from forced assimilation and grueling labor to widespread sexual and physical abuse according to a 2007 Amnesty International investigation. These children were separated from their families. About 200 Oglala Lakota activists and members of the American Indian Movement, AIM, a civil rights organization established in 1968, invaded Wounded Knee in 1973 on Pine Ridge in protest of a political crackdown by tribe president Dick Wilson. 
FBI and other U.S. law enforcement agencies supported Wilson, who had organized a private army to repress dissenters. The protesters requested Wilson's resignation and treaty observance by the U.S. government. Following a 71-day struggle with the authorities, the protesters called off the occupation without getting Wilson to step down. Over the next few years, dozens of opponents of the tribal government were slaughtered, but the U.S. administration remained silent, claiming it had no power to overthrow the despotic ruler. AIM activist Leonard Peltier was convicted twice in 1977 of shooting two FBI agents in the Pine Ridge village of Oglala. Peltier received two consecutive life sentences. Many activists view Peltier as a political prisoner, and Amnesty International and other rights groups have expressed concerns about the fairness of his trial and conviction. It is impossible to understand the structure of settler colonialism as a precondition for that poverty if one does not understand the ways in which native bodies are made poor and are criminalized, claims Estes. Estes connects this history to current poverty, rising rates of police deaths and incarceration, and the intense conditions of colonialism. It goes beyond anything that only occurred in the past. Something that wounds you over and over again cannot heal. There is constant trauma imposed, Life on Pine Ridge Indian Reservation was marked by a series of challenges that impacted various facets of daily living. One of the most pressing issues is economic hardship. The reservation consistently ranks among the poorest areas in the United States, with high unemployment rates and limited economic opportunities. This economic instability is exacerbated by inadequate infrastructure limited access to quality education, and a lack of basic services. In Pine Ridge, education poses significant challenges due to a shortage of qualified teachers, outdated educational materials, and a high dropout rate. These issues create a cycle of restricted educational achievement, raising concerns about the overall effectiveness of the school system. The consequences of this cycle are far-reaching, affecting employment opportunities and perpetuating the cycle of poverty. Health disparities also plague the community. The prevalence of chronic health conditions, such as diabetes and heart disease, is higher than the national average. Limited access to healthcare facilities and inadequate health education exacerbate these health issues. Additionally, mental health concerns, including high rates of depression and suicide, pose significant challenges for the residents of this reservation. Like other American Indian communities, the Lakota have faced a challenging convergence of circumstances that have rendered economic growth impossible. Since there are no banks on the Pine Ridge Reservation and unemployment is close to 85 percent, it is probably not surprising that the Pine Ridge economy is a cash-and-carry one. Pine Ridge has long been plagued by poverty due to a lack of revenue and a dependency on government assistance. Although entrepreneurship is prevalent, 83% of the population engages in micro-enterprise. Starting a firm is difficult since locals cannot obtain financing. Because the lands on which all reservations are located are held in trust by the United States government, Pine Ridge inhabitants have been unable to get collateral for a loan due to the nature of the trust relationship established by Congress in the 19th century. The Lakota Fund was established in 1986 to offer micro-enterprises non-collateral loans to address some of the economic issues in Pine Ridge. The Grameen Bank of Bangladesh served as the inspiration for the Lakota Fund's organizational structure. It enabled individuals who would have needed help to obtain business loans independently to band together as a credit group and apply for loans from lenders. The group then depends on each member maintaining a good relationship with the lender so that the other members may obtain their loans. The plan works because group members may utilize peer pressure to compel others to comply. 
even though the Lakota Fund was ultimately dissolved, mainly because it did not consider the cultural foundations of the Lakota people. This kind of economic development might probably be pursued in the future. Eventually, though, the system would need to recognize the importance of family relationships with the Lakota and let relatives form a credit group. Family members are not permitted to be members of credit groups under the terms of the original Grameen Bank plan. In Lakota culture, the Tio Spaye is associated with safety and comfort, symbolizing an establishment that people may trust. Although some groups were finally permitted to include family members, the Lakota Fund program was discontinued in 1996 due to a change to collateral-based financing. Since the primary obstacle to getting loans is the absence of collateral, the U.S. terminating its trust relationship with American Indian tribes would allow for complete ownership of lands allocated to them would be another way to resolve this issue. For the Lakota, the Black Hills' quick restoration may be the only way to make up for the cultural and economic harm the U.S. has caused. Numerous studies on the topic of alcohol use among Native Americans indicate that the root causes include disparities in how drinking habits are perceived, peer pressure, and the loss of traditional control systems. Research on the psychology of poverty has shown compelling evidence that links deprivation and hopelessness to criminal activity, despair, suicidal thoughts, and drug addiction. Among heavy drinkers in the U.S., unemployment is the greatest rate. Both American culture at large and Native American communities can attest to this. The reason for Native Americans' excessive drinking is that they share with other minorities similar conditions of low socioeconomic status. Discrimination, poverty, poor housing, lack of education, and other deprivations. Research demonstrates that desperation brought on by poverty makes dangerous behaviors like drug and alcohol addiction appear less expensive. For example, a negative self-perception coupled with a belief that there is nothing to lose might lead to a higher likelihood of drug dependency. Pine Ridge follows the same pattern, with alcohol being the preferred substance. Two key elements to consider while analyzing drinking behavior are the disintegration of social structures and peer pressure. After Native American belief systems were suppressed, religious forms and socialization agents failed to adequately express new norms and values, which led to the disintegration of social institutions and the demoralization of the people. The effects of this process represent this process of acculturation. Additionally, a great deal of discontent and feelings of inadequacy are increased by the fact that many Lakota guys cannot obtain work and support their families. In exchange, drinking alcoholic beverages and participating in the daring exploits that mandate is thought of as a validation of manhood. Lakota people consume alcohol largely because of peer pressure, which creates high expectations to drink and complicates abstinence attempts. The social environment in which alcohol is introduced and accepted is provided by the teenage generation and the close family. Many individuals aiming for abstinence from alcohol often opt for a more secluded lifestyle to avoid the urge to drink. Common deterrents for those pursuing a life without alcohol include pressure from drinkers, a lack of support groups, initial loneliness, and a perceived absence of friends. The prevalence of problem drinking among American Indians may be exaggerated due to externally imposed definitions of alcoholism. Indian and white drinking habits seem to differ from one another, and remarks made by Native Americans frequently express dissatisfaction with the term alcoholic. Native Americans usually seek out drunkenness rapidly and drink impulsively in groups. Additionally, there is evidence that deviant behaviors committed while under the influence are eventually forgotten because alcohol was the cause of the transgression rather than the offender. Last but not least, because it is typical to lack a consistent source of money, drinking will frequently stop for days or weeks at a time until a fresh supply of alcohol can be bought. 
the availability of a supply source is one of the most important considerations for arid reservations like Pine Ridge. Border towns offer a way to obtain alcohol and support the drinking culture. Situated in Pine Ridge, Nebraska, white clay has been embroiled in controversy for the past 10 years. According to reports, eight out of 10 households in Pine Ridge are impacted by alcohol. Over 50% of the community struggles with alcohol addiction and alcohol-related mortality is 300% more than the national average. Housing conditions on the reservation are often substandard with a shortage of adequate and affordable housing. Overcrowding is common, contributing to the spread of infectious diseases. Many homes lack basic amenities, such as running water and electricity, highlighting the urgent need for improved infrastructure. The infrastructure challenges extend beyond housing. The reservation faces difficulty maintaining reliable transportation, making it difficult for residents to access healthcare, education, and employment opportunities. Limited access to high-speed internet further isolates the community and hampers efforts to bridge educational and economic gaps. Amidst the myriad of challenges, the Pine Ridge Reservation remains a vibrant hub of Lakota culture and traditions. The reservation hosts various cultural events and powwows celebrating traditional dances, music, and art. The Lakota language is preserved through community programs, and elders play a crucial role in passing down oral histories and traditional knowledge to younger generations. The Oglala Lakota place immense value on their connection to the land. The reservation's vast landscapes hold sacred sites and play a central role in ceremonies and spiritual practices. Efforts to protect natural resources and reclaim ancestral lands are ongoing reflecting the deep cultural ties between the Oglala Lakota and their environment. Despite the numerous challenges, the people of Pine Ridge exemplify remarkable resilience. Community-driven initiatives led by tribal leaders and grassroots organizations aim to address systemic issues and create positive change. Efforts to promote economic development, improve educational opportunities, and enhance healthcare services are underway, driven by a commitment to building a brighter future for the community. Community support networks are vital in Pine Ridge. Extended families and tight-knit social circles provide a source of strength and solidarity. Traditional ceremonies and rituals play a crucial role in fostering community and identity, offering solace in adversity. Nonprofit organizations and partnerships with external entities contribute to the community's resilience. Initiatives focused on youth empowerment, cultural preservation, and sustainable development aim to break the cycle of poverty and address the root causes of the challenges faced by Pine Ridge residents. Addressing the complex issues faced by the Pine Ridge Reservation requires a multifaceted approach that involves collaboration between tribal, federal, and state entities. Initiatives to improve education, healthcare, and economic opportunities must be culturally sensitive and developed in partnership with the community. Education reform is a key component of empowerment. Investments in school infrastructure, teacher training, and curriculum development can help break the cycle of limited educational attainment Culturally relevant education incorporating Lakota history, language, and traditions is crucial for fostering a sense of pride and identity among the youth. Improving the reservation's healthcare services involves addressing physical and mental health needs. Increased funding for healthcare facilities, mental health resources, and preventive care programs can contribute to better health outcomes. Additionally, Initiatives that empower community members to take an active role in their well-being, such as wellness programs and health education campaigns, can make a lasting impact. Economic development efforts must focus on creating sustainable opportunities that align with the cultural values of the Oglala Lakota. Support for entrepreneurship, 
job training programs, and initiatives that harness the potential of natural resources can contribute to economic self-sufficiency. Life on the Pine Ridge Native American Reservation is an intricate blend of historical trauma, cultural richness, and present-day challenges. While the community faces significant hurdles, the resilience and strength of the Oglala Lakota people shine through. Efforts to address systemic issues and empower the community are underway, but the path forward requires ongoing commitment, collaboration, and respect for the unique cultural identity of the Oglala Lakota. Through a holistic and community-driven approach, there is hope for a brighter future that preserves the heritage of Pine Ridge while creating opportunities for future generations. There has been an effort to shed light on the economic, social, and historical undercurrents that have influenced Pine Ridge people's situation. It is critical to acknowledge the ancillary problems that have transformed the Lakota people's health and culture and how they have affected alcohol consumption. The U.S. government has permanently altered the Lakota people's economic and health conditions through the taking of their land and traditional sustenance methods. The Lakota people's integration into American culture has been shaky due to many factors, including the imposition of European ideas and cultural changes brought about by the Tayo Spay's decline. Due to the poverty and injustices of American reservation life, many people, though obviously not all, have turned to alcohol as a coping mechanism. Even if there isn't a simple answer to these issues, the U.S. government has an obvious responsibility. The most equitable way to make up for past wrongs is for the Black Hills and all other territories specified in the Fort Laramie treaties to be returned immediately to the Great Sioux Nation. In addition to recognizing Native Americans' right to self-determination, this would demonstrate how the U.S. is taking accountability for its past misdeeds. The Lakota would also get a sizable income from the repatriation of the Black Hills, allowing for more culturally appropriate changes to be undertaken to raise Pine Ridge people's standard of living. On that note, we end today's episode. Thank you for joining us once again. We hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you will be the first to see our new updates.